It's potluck time, part of the show where we go around the table and share our favorite stories of the day. And this is my favorite, but maybe not yours. So, some economic news out today about the GDP, that is the growth, uh, the um, the GDP. Uh, help me out here, Rick. What? Oh, uh, gross domestic. Gross domestic product, product. thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes, and uh, Fox Business can explain it a heck of a lot better than I can. So let's get to this first quarter GDP report, obviously rocking the markets right now. The economy skidding to a near halt in the first three months of the year. So the economy grew this last quarter at 0.2%. Now the population is growing at 0.8%. So that means technically it is negative growth. If you have two consecutive quarters of negative growth, that is a recession. Now certainly, you know, we'd have to see what happens uh, in the second quarter, uh, perhaps weather. Some people were blaming having an effect on the economy to a certain extent, but still 0.2% is 0.2%. Uh, meanwhile, under Reagan, uh, there were 23 quarters where it grew at an average of 4.8%, just to give you a little bit of context on that. Anyway, 0.2 though, well, the news could have been worse. We could have got a number that sounds like this. Zero point zero. <laughs> Whenever you can work that clip into any part of your show, you take you it. that opportunity. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's discuss here around the table, Rick, because you had your hand yeah, up. Yeah, my hand was just remember ahead, last year's first quarter was a negative number. Mm -hmm. The year went on to show a decent, not thrilling, but decent return. And people are going to get all crazy about this. If this happens again next quarter, we'll be concerned. It's unlikely that it will. Here's my question. Can a Hillary Clinton run on President Obama's economic record? No. No way. But all the job growth and whatnot. Yeah, but I think that it's pretty clear to people who are actually living the in the real world that that's not happening, that they don't see any rewards, that they don't see any growth, and they want to see growth. And I think that she's going to have to run on something different. Jane? Look, let's go back to 2008, the subprime mortgage mess. I remember the neighbor next to me, a very nice guy, went to foreclosure. Uh, there was unemployment, was rampant. Uh, the stock market was suffering. Now the stock market's up, real estate prices are up, uh, unemployment's down. The big picture is things have done much better under Obama than <coughs> you know who. George W. Bush. So yeah. Hillary Clinton will run against George W. Bush and tout that economic record? She In other won't, words, she can won't she run, she run it, but she won't run against it either. I think she's going to. Well, well, doesn't the economy she's always. Record, it'll be her oh. husband Bill's record yeah, where things were really right. great. Whoa. Okay. Just, right. And I want you to answer in 20 seconds. So she'll basically say if you want to go back to the 90s where things were booming <laughs> before the internet bubble <laughs> burst and we weren't at war and everything was great, vote for me. I can bring you back like 1.21 gigawatts in a DeLorean. That's one way to I put it, but it's not accurate. Message. I was asking Jane. It's a twofer. <laughs> when you get Hillary, you get a twofer. Okay. Now can I say answer? That's yeah. not fair. Yeah, you can say that's back there, but then ask that same question saying, would you like to have the economic growth of the Clinton years? And people will definitely go, oh, yeah. But, 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 but it's not the 90s. And people no, will actually not. fall for that? What do you mean? Fall for, you want to get back to 90s, vote for me? No, it's do you no, want to have a balanced budget again? And do you want to have economic growth that's comparable with that And time? who in Congress helped balance that budget and wrote that, that, What's that, that agreement? What's that with what your question was? John Kasich is the answer, by the way. <laughs> He's always the answer. That's what has to do with that. He worked with way, Clinton on John, that. John Kasich likes to take credit for it. And everybody in Congress, mm -hmm. you know I like your man, yeah. but everybody in Congress laughs about it. Really? Yes. Only John Kasich. <laughs> His name's on it. Responsible His name it. is on it. That's all I know. <laughs> all right, Heather. You usually go first. And I love I know, the color, no, by I the way. No time left. Okay, yeah. so at no, Wesleyan University, true. there is a fraternity. It is Delta Kappa Epsilon, who has been not asked, but told that they have to allow women into the fraternity house and it's for a number of reasons that to make sure that everything's fair all of the students there have to live on campus for all four years so it's to expand the opportunities for women to live in the different houses the issue that I have with this is that on campus they have a woman of color house they have a house for Christians they have a house for Muslims they have a house for LGP, LGB, TT, QQ, FAG, PB, DSM community. No, no, Heather, Heather, Heather. <laughs> We're very thorough on this show. Yeah, so you it? have to say that all in Greek. Some of them, no, 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 those aren't Greek words. <laughs> they are, it's the like lesbian, gay, bi bisexual, but some of them I can't say on air. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah, Wait, some can of I look those. At your notes, please? I want to see what it is. But Keep going. The, the idea is to allow, to make 
with the, I have no problem with any of them. If that LGBTQFAGPBDSM group wants to have their own house, great. But to ha- take the idea of a fraternity with 147 years of history and to tell them that they have to now have women, which is completely contrary to the history of a fraternity, live in the house, it just seems unfair. The fraternity has filed a lawsuit. I think that they should go forward with the lawsuit and do their best to win it because it really, there is, it is unnecessary to strike down fraternity in response to some of what's been going on. You're introduced every night here as a powerhouse attorney. So how does this case go? You know, it's being argued on misrepresentation charges and discrimination, but also Mm -hmm. misrepresentation. I think that they have a strong argument. They do. I mean, I think that there's certainly an argument for misrepresentation because when the fraternity started and when these fraternity brothers started in this house, they believed that they were going to be allowed to keep it as a fraternity. Sororities have houses as well. So I think that they have a very good shot. And I think that they should get more support of the people behind them rather than people saying that they need to open those doors. I want you to finish the sentence for me. <laughs> Political correctness has... Run amuck. Right. Run amuck is correct. Uh, you know, two quick things. Yep. One, if you saw those houses on the screen, wow. Yep. And two, <laughs> I have something to agree with Heather on. She's absolutely right about this. Great yep. Right. And I agree. Wow. Those are some pretty nice houses. Anyway, this is all the time we have for Potluck. Yay and A's next on The Daily Wrap.